I'm new around here. Is this where the meeting is being held? Don't ask me. <laughs> well, what do we have here? Fresh meat! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Fortnite Victory Royale with cheese. Chaos Agent, Lynx, Midas Rex, and Ripley. Two things before we get into this. Hasbro did send me a box with these and a couple of other goodies that I may take a look at on the live stream sometime this week. But these are the four that I wanted to take a look at. Because, point number two, I know jack about Fortnite. I just like interesting designs in good functional action figure form. <laughs> That's all I'm looking for. If you've watched the channel enough, you know that I like taking these and putting them into situations with my other lines, my G.I. Joes, my Marvel Legends, my Star Wars. I collect other lines because I'm into the properties. I collect these because they're just fun. Or, well, I'm hoping these are fun. Looking at the package, it's that new kind of more cardboard, less plastic thing that they're trying. I think I've opened a couple of Transformers like this. Just initial thought is I can see a little bit of the figure. Are the accessories in there? You find this on a peg and you can't really see what's going on except for the head, torso, and arms. And even then, it's so dark in there. It shows the accessories that are coming with it here on the side. On the back, not a lot going on here. Kind of a product shot of the figure again the accessories warnings down below for the other side it's just <laughs> the arm of the front pictures on the top just hooks on the bottom warnings legalese barcodes so let's start out with chaos agent not for any reason in particular just that you know guy in suit package may look bigger and heavier and more cardboardy but it's still just a wait really the accessories are just it packed in the bottom is oh no again if this is at the store and somebody just pops the bottom stuff falls out to them and then you just close the bottom and it looks like nothing happened well there's another one hmm. looking at the body very clean but very stylized very thin in the limbs so i can't take this suit and like use it for customs for other lines this is specifically fortnite this is gonna stay chaos agent but in that aspect he does look pretty badass everything is sculpted here there's a little tension to the front this is glued shut you can't just open that up in fact i was looking at articulation a minute ago and it looked kind of like I was tearing that apart. But it's got the buttons with some red paint on it. Add some color and the same red for the tie here on the pocket square or whatever it's called. A little bit of red shirt poking out from the suit jacket. Nice detail. I don't know what these two red paint lines on the back are. I, they're just there. Seam line running down the outside of the pants. Again, very, very thin. Down to the shoes with a little bit of red here on the sole. Just a splash of color. Make it stand out a bit. And going back to the promotional images again, it took me way too long to realize that there's only two fingers and a thumb on the hands. So there's something weird going on. There's more red painted. Just a little dot here, a little dot here with these hoses running up to the head. Notice the red on the back of the head too with these straps and then silver for the eyes. Kind of this gas mask look. And that is the defining visual. The rest, <laughs> suit up top. Oh, what the hell's going on here? Again, another little red dash right there. A little bit of silver splashed on the sides. Silver on the piping where it attaches. Little extra flourishes that I appreciate. Is he plugged into his own back though? Oh no, that probably works whenever we get here, but we'll get to accessories. Going over articulation, which I, again, I've never messed with the Hasbro Fortnite stuff. They seem to take some of the better ideas from other lines and implement them into their own figures. They did the dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with the ball at the bottom. The hoses seem to want to hold it back barely. If you really crank on it, you can look straight up. It does tend to move back to position. Can look down a bit. All in the tilt, baby. Even with those hoses, though, side to side. There is a butterfly joint in there. Goes forward, goes back. Peg at the shoulder, swivels all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder. Very, very tight detents. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes all the way up. The bottom was kind of stuck, but now that it's freed, boop, swivel at the wrist and then hinges up and down for a gun holding hand. There is a hinge mid torso, some flex to it can get forward slightly back. I think there is a ball joint at the waist, but there's not a lot of movement except for rotation. Ball coming out to the hip goes forward, back, out, look at that. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, come, oh yeah, easy. Bam, 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 bam. Swivel at the pants cuff, hinge at the ankle goes, whoa, all the way back, all the way forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there is this back bling that seems to be some kind of tank or something looks kind of goopy here 
with some kind of grill. Then there's gauges up here. That plugs into the back and it makes the hoses <laughs> seem realistic, I guess you could say. Also comes with this machine gun. Avoiding too many comparisons to the Jazzwares line, this seems a bit more realistic. Have some green in there, some red, some silver. It looks like a nice gun. That easily goes into the hand. You push, you twist the trigger finger onto it and done. And the hands are soft enough that you can just open them up, throw them around whatever you want to and yeah. For a game that you spend most of your time shooting other players, the action figure itself replicates that beautifully. And then there is this harvesting tool that kind of follows the same motif of black goopiness. It's almost venom-like. And again, because of the softness here, but not having finger hinges, which is another Jazzwares comparison, you just shove it in and it grips it. It holds it. It doesn't fall open and drop stuff. Next, let's take a look at Midas Rex. There's more accessories. And then another accessory in the bottom flap. So they put one in the bottom, they put one inside the flap, and then I'm guessing they put another one. Yeah, inside this part here. Is that going to be consistent through all four figures? Okay, reiterating the fact that I do not know Fortnite, but on top of that, I've went out of my way to avoid reviews of these. I wanted to go in clean, fresh, and I did not know he had cowboy holsters on his hips. In fact, open it up and the guns come out of the holsters. Caught me off guard and it makes me completely happy. We've seen too many holsters lately where the guns don't come out, but again, this game 99% of the time you're running around shooting other people. This makes sense. The strap works fantastically, goes up over the gun and plugs in and look at that. Just speaking aesthetically, it seems out of place on the rest of the body that almost looks like it walked out of a, a Iron Man cutscene or something. I mean, it could be an arc reactor in the chest and it comes up to some circles. The shoulder pads we've seen in other lines too, where it's rubbery and then it's a ring that goes between the shoulder and the body. So it rotates with this, but it also stays out of the way. It flexes up with the arm. There's so much more sculpt to this compared to Chaos Agent. It's very intricate. There's a lot of stuff going on. These hoses running down in places from armor plate to armor plate. Coming down to the legs, there's a thigh pad, there's knee pads, there's shin guards. Well, I say shin guards, it's the whole leg going all the way around. In fact, can he fly with these thrusters? Am I just trained to think that now? And then at the foot, it almost gives off a cowboy vibe, but then looking at the rest of the body, you think, oh, that's more knight. Or maybe it's knight cowboy. Cowboy knight? Oh. And then I love the gold used. It's not bright and shiny and see a reflection kind of gold, but it does its job, especially for a character named Midas. And I like the contrast of this darker gold or copper or whatever. It's used in several parts like here and then on the back, these bolts or whatever, just in places. They didn't paint the undersuit, which has a lot of textures, a lot of intricate sculpt to it too. The ass flap has some nice line work to it and it has the gold running down the sides, a bit torn at the bottom. And that's the same with the crotch cover too, both made out of a soft material that gets out of the way of articulation. Proportions here are much more natural than Chaos Agent, but there's still some wackiness with the size of the hands compared to the rest of the body. And then the head up top could probably be seen as small, but again, it's the style of the game. It looks like some photo reel for the eyeball staring out. It has that gold color that matches the rest. It works into the overall design scheme. Big red scar coming across the whited out eye. And then the hair sculpted fades down to a shaved look around there. And yeah, there's the pixels from some photo reel. Going over articulation again, looks like a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball down at the bottom. You can already see I'm cranking it all the way up. Doesn't look as far down as I thought it would, but there's down. Always some beautiful tilt with that setup. Side to side, there's forward, there's back. Peg at the shoulder. Again, that shoulder pad rides the shoulder all the way around. Hinges out much more smoother than Chaos Agent. Comes up to 90. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes, oh yeah, again, all the way up. But if you go all the way up, it pulls that hose out of the back. And I thought I broke it at first, but it actually plugs right back in. Swivel at the wrist, up and down hinge for a trigger finger hand. Wait, double trigger finger hand. Oh, yep, double up and down hinges. There is a Dumbbell at the top and a ball joint at the bottom. All together can get some crunch, some arc back, so much tilt. Rotation up top and rotation down bottom. Ball at the hip comes forward, back, out. The holster does run into the torso, but it's rubbery. It's moving out of the way. It's better than most Spider-Mans. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, 
gets in the way. Doesn't come all the way up, but still impressive. I find the cut at the shin odd, but it's another articulation point. Hinge at the angle goes all the way back. Forward, but runs into the armor right there. Forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, like I already pointed out, these pistols come out of the holster. Oh yeah. Quick and easy. I dig it. But if you want to go more hack and slash, there is this sword with the split up the middle. Well, I say sword. It looks like a huge dagger. It definitely fits the design scheme going on here. Push it into the hand. Same colors used same aesthetic for back bling it adds a lot of regalness to it with this cape again plugs into the back doesn't go all the way but i guess it'll hold definitely not as soft as the crotch cover it hangs it's slightly heavy and it'll get in the way of sitting down so i don't know it's cool, but I may not use that. What I'll definitely end up using is this helmet. And originally I thought it went over the head, but you have to pop the head off. That gives us a look at the dumbbell joint up at the top and then pop this on. It still falls in the small category, but it works because, well, I don't know, I kind of like this too. They're both equally badass. If I want to use this on another shelf, this is a bit more droid-like, except when you look in that eye. You see a little humanity peeking out. Help me, I'm trapped inside this armor. And then there's Lynx. Should have, oh, oh nope, there it is. Something within the first flap, something in the last. It also kind of hides the size of the figure within the package. I'm sure when I get to Ripley, it's gonna take up a lot more space here. It's not a bad thing, we're kind of used to that but we're also kind of used to seeing the figure in the package. And where Chaos Agent and Midas Rex felt more stylized with their proportions, Lynx, I, I feel like I could use her in any display and she would fit right in. Now the hands are slightly big, the feet are slightly small, but other than that, yeah, this could run with any action figure line. Again, with the shoulder pads, they're sandwiched between the shoulder and the torso, so they ride with the shoulder, but also get out of the way if you want them to. The armor bits sculpted onto the torso, and the use of glossy black and matte. That is always appreciated on a character like this. It helps the details pop in places, and it also helps that design work pop on the chest. You have to look for it, but with the different gloss, that's cool. Then you get below the waist, and there's a lot more glossy black. Maybe because there's not this gray, but I almost feel like this should be here too, kind of balancing it out. That's the game, that's the design, not the figure, and so I can't gripe about it. Oh man, they did it. They put the swivel all the way down here just so it'll be hidden by this, that's awesome. Some knee pad look to the middle of it gets down to that fading triangle design, whatever that is. That's how it's done on the arms too, but much more intricately. There's the gray triangles, the black fades to here, and then the triangles fade to here into the gray undersuit. Notice pinless double knees, pinless double elbows on a female character. Also, they changed up the wrist articulation for the hinge to be on the arm itself this time around compared to Midas Rex and Chaos Agent. On the back, same use of glosses and mats, and that's appreciated because they didn't have to. You put the back bling on, most of this is hidden, and some companies don't do the back at all, which Hasbro <laughs> does do on some of their other lines, but here, they didn't do that. Then there's the tail on a ball joint, comes out to about right there, and then swivels all the way around. Most of the time it's just gonna hang. Then there's the helmet, which it feels like the eyes are way too low, but we're talking about a crazy ass toy line, so that works for me. Silver to the ears, well, okay, silver to the human ear covers, and then there's the cat lynx ears up on top. And then kind of a metal braid ponytail sticking off the top down the back. I didn't realize that there was design work to the outside of the thigh too. It's very subtle like this up here. It's got some hidden gems to it. I don't know how much I care for this being printed in white on the inside and then this is actually part of the sculpt. It could have been more to the back I feel like instead of just being noticeable in neutral position. But going over articulation we run into the same thing once again. In fact there's a ball joint down at the bottom. And that only popped off because I really cranked on it. Pops right back on. With the dumbbell up top, ball joint down bottom, can look up, down, so pretty. Swivel, butterfly joint at the shoulder, not quite, well, there is some range to it. I was gonna say not quite as much as the males, but still forward and back. Peg outside of that, rotates the arm all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder, comes up, swivel at the bicep, double elbow, I'm guessing this'll, yep, 
there you go. Hinge on the forearm itself goes up and down for a trigger finger hand and then rotates on the outside of that. Dumbbell joint mid torso, ball at the waist, but doesn't get a lot of crunch. Gets more arc. That's because they wanted the sculpt to look like it's one piece, like trying to hide the articulation. So there's more plastic here on the front than there is on the back, but it doesn't get in the way of tilt. Ball coming out to the hip, goes forward, back, out. Oh yeah. Like I showed a minute ago, they move the swivel down to here to be hidden behind the thigh armor. Double Oh, not quite, but you can force it to get all the way. Bing! Ooh, same setup here. They put a hinge on the bottom of the leg itself. So hinges back, hinges forward, forward facing pin for rocker. The back bling is this crazy looking teddy bear, and I live for stuff like this. But it also brings another color into the overall palette with pink. It plugs into the back, and I love how badass she looks. Stealth ninja running through the hallways, killing everybody in her way. And then she has this on the back. Also comes with this harvesting tool, fits right in with the design of Lynx with the silver plates up top coming down to just a kind of a basic handle, then down to some more silver at the bottom. Softness of the hands, but still better than a hinge that loosens up and drops your weapons and stuff. And there's also this gun. Again, skews more realistic than what we've been seeing over the past couple of years. Nice sculpt work to it with some, well, Green is brought into the overall color scheme again. I can't help but appreciate that. These grips are always a little bit tougher than... Uh, oh, well, okay. <laughs> There's just something about a gun-wielding pose that gets me. Because she can also shoulder it too. Whoa. And then, as always, I saved my most anticipated for last. And in this case, that's Ripley. Oh, well, nothing there. This one broke the, the trend of extras down at the bottom. There. That. There's that. So it looks like I'm actually missing the hammer. Oh, wait, nope. <laughs> it's on the side. Can't go changing things up on me, Hasbro. I'm a creature of habit. And yup, <laughs> this is my favorite. Mostly because it's the weirdest one out of Wave 1, but at the same time, it's also the most substantial. It's the weightiest. It's the most solid feeling figure. And while the body, like up here, and the arms are smooth and translucent, there is a lot of detail packed into the rest of the sculpt. I mean, even at the gloves, they painted the, the matte black to match the rest, but the plastic itself is actually that translucent blue to match the rest of the underbody, or whatever this thing is. This shirt, kind of overalls, I guess you could call them. The buckles are painted silver, and there's this texture sculpted onto here, and the different silver parts, the smooth, the rough. Oh, it just adds so much to it. That's coming around to the back with, again, there's this yellow, but there's no other yellow on the figure. On the back, it doesn't completely cover it up, but it covers up a lot of it. That comes down to the belt that has these sculpted straps sticking up that kind of simulate this coming down and attaching to the belt when it's not. It gets out of the way of articulation that way, and it does come off to the side. Plus, there's some silver painted on there with the pouches here on the side, pouches on the front. It could fit into the 90s just as well as Fortnite in 2021. I don't know what the E stands for, or if that's supposed to be an E, or if that's just a, an elaborate buckle. That goes down to the legs that also have this sculpted texture on them. Is this an overlay piece? It is. These thigh pads with the straps coming around are actually attached to this belt, and it's all a separate piece. Well, I say separate. It may be sandwiched in there. It doesn't want to move up and down very easily. But the pants texture continues all the way down with some wrinkles and stuff to the boot and I love the look of these. I love a good big chunky boot. Not a lot of paint apps to it, but it's got the laces sculpted in with a couple of straps down here at the bottom. And some nice tampos here on the outside of those. I don't know what that means, but it looks nice. And then up at the head, it looks kind of, I, I don't know, like an oddball goldfish floating in goo, I guess. And way back, I thought this was just solid. It would have a head inside of this, and there would be no way for this to move. But Hasbro went out of their way to make this pop offable. Hey, you knew exactly what I was talking about. Pop offable can be a word. And then this floaty thing is on a dumbbell joint with a ball at the bottom, ball up in there. So you can get some forwards on back all around, just looking around. You put it into the position that you want it in, and then you pop this back on. I mean, you're not going to get extreme. If you put it like looking way over here, the dome of the cover pushes it back into position. But you can get some nuanced looks to it, like a little tilt under there or off to the side. Yeah, it works. And that does pop on more secure if you put it there. 
then pop the back on. Another figure that blends right into my background. It's crazy how often that has happened in the past few months. But going over articulation, again, if you remove this, you have this dumbbell joint at the head. There is a dumbbell joint at the shoulder that comes forward and goes back. It doesn't go as far as I thought. And I said that about links, but I definitely mean it about Ripley. Oh, no, it just popped and goes further back. Forward, it kind of runs into this strap. But the peg on the outside of that rotates the arm all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder comes up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Big gloopy arm. You wouldn't expect a double elbow to come up to there, but it does. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge that goes up and down for a trigger finger hand. Hinge mid torso. Ball down at the bottom. Goes forward. Well, not so much back. Not as much tilt as the others, but there's some. Rotation down there. Ball coming out to the hip, and I haven't tried this yet, but... Oh, there's a lot of bending and flex in there. Does come up to there. Not much back. Out. Oh, well, more than I expected. Comes up to about right there, but not the best of the wave. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Strap gets in the way. Goes to about right there. Swivel at the top of the boot. Hinge at the ankle. Goes back. Forward. Forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there is this back bling. And like the rest, this looks like it's just a part of the suit itself. I think it goes this way, but... You can't really plug it in all the way. It kind of pushes off these yellow straps. But it has a tank that's the same translucent goo, whatever it is. So maybe that's... And speaking of translucent blue, the harvesting tool is just a big hammer. There's not a lot of sculpted detail to it. There's the top and... Maybe it's because of the plastic, but Ripley's hands aren't near as soft as the rest of the wave, but still not a huge problem getting stuff into them. Come on! And then, as if that wasn't enough, there's also this blue translucent shotgun with... Is that some blue? Some black painted here and here and here. There it is. Slightly tougher to get into the hand. Get in there. Twist. But hey, it's a jello mold that can hold a shotgun. You're not going to see that every day. He can hold it straight out. That's awesome. Have him look to the side like that. Beautiful. <laughs> I notice on all three of them, the back bling is not the most secure. It's almost a softer... Well, it is a soft peg there. Links is, again, flexible. Not terrible, I guess. And then Midas, yeah, you get to hitting it down here, and it's kind of... Hmm. Also, their sizes aren't as crazy all... No. It seems because of the articulation and everything and thinner parts used here and there, a couple of them have more trouble staying that and I haven't broken in all the detents yet. Get the joints all going nice and smooth. But I expected more size difference than this. For some reason in my head, Chaos Agent and Lynx was going to be a lot smaller than Midas Rex, who is going to be a lot smaller than Ripley, but these are actually kind of realistic sizes. With Ripley standing almost seven inches up to the top of his goop curl, Chaos Agent stands at about six and a quarter. Lynx to the top of her ears is about six and an eighth, and then Midas Rex stands at six and a half inches, which fits right in with the Jazzwares Legendary series. Just look at them. I mean, if you didn't know any better, you would think they were in the same toy line. Both companies seem to have done a fantastic job translating game sprite into plastic action figure. And even though Jazzwares skewed a little bit small with some of their figures, this still works. It's still a cast of crazy characters that you just want to smash all together. And I like that they're compatible. But y'all know me. I like mixing and matching my Fortnite into other lines. And here it is with the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper version 1 and the Hasbro Marvel Legends Black Panther, which also works perfectly fine with Lynx and Ripley. And I didn't expect the sizes to be almost exactly the same between Lynx and the Moffex Hush Cat Woman. But then there's also the Mafex Peter B. Parker that, you know, could cross universes and be fighting Ripley this morning and teaming up the next day. Chaos Agent's proportions kind of throw this out of whack, but he could be like a hiding symbiote or something. This... <laughs> Yeah, did rogue Iron Man enemy armor or something, or Centurion, or wasn't there a Marvel villain that looked kind of like this? So at the end of the day, the name of the game is fun, and I can't deny it. I had fun with these. It's weird jumping from one company to the next without a lot of hiccups. You know what I mean? It almost seems like the flow of what we've been getting for a couple of years is going to continue on for another couple of years, at least. Most of what we've seen in plastic form from Jazzwares so far doesn't seem to be on Hasbro's radar, at least not yet. I'm sure there's going to be some overlap, but for the time being, this is 
just continuing on. Now I'm going to admit my least favorite is Chaos Agent. He seems the stiffest when it comes to joints. Then there's Midas Rex. I love the look of this armor. I like the gold. It's a nice moving action figure, but for some reason he's got the same problem down at the ankles or the legs. The balance is off somehow. He's just a good looking action figure that is more comfortable in action poses. Lynx is just a well-balanced female action figure all around. More realistic proportions that skews away from the Fortnite look for the most part, which means, hey, you can use this anywhere you want, but she also still fits right in with the rest of this crew. But Ripley is the craziest. <laughs> you knew this was going to be my favorite. I love the food items. I love the crazy out there characters and Ripley is a part of that. And like I said way back at the first, Hasbro sent these along, but I've seen these in person and I've, I've tried to resist, but I was eventually going to break down and buy them anyway. In fact, I may buy doubles of a couple of these because mm, that may make interesting custom and there's got to be something I can use for that. Hmm. Plus there's already more on the horizon, more that look just as fantastic as these. So getting in on the ground floor is not a bad thing. I did the same thing with Jazzwares and I had nothing but a good time throughout the life of that line. That's not quite over yet. There's still releases coming, but this is a good start. This is the next plateau. So if you enjoyed the overview, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Ripley could fit into the mutant liberation front or those crazy stories from around new X-Men time. You could imagine this guy walking up to the gates of Xavier's school and just going, oh, I need help. But Lynx, holy shit. A futuristic Catwoman, an armored up Dora Melange, a Star Wars bounty hunter that runs around with Jackson in the comic books back in the day. It's crazy how many ideas I have for this and this and this.